NXT brings back the Battleground name and WWE makes sure to show everything in the promo video except for previous Battleground events are NXT wrestlers. Doesn't guarantee the walkout. But WWE makes sure to not show the guy who defeated Finn Balor to win the NXT Championship in the same arena because they're currently competing head-to-head -head with AEW's pay-per-view and the IWC is already brawling about it. Just who will be left standing? Get it? Because we have a last man standing match scheduled for tonight, we gotta make as many references to standing up as possible. I don't know, maybe we've just had one too many last man standing matches in the last year that made me hear that all the time. Congratulate the Boston Celtics going to game seven. Well, I think we can put the blame on Booker T for jinxing the Boston Celtics momentum after the result of game seven in the NBA playoffs. <laughs> I suppose this is the norm we gotta get used to. For Raw and SmackDown events, a giant LED screen. For NXT events, the same thing, just tinier. One of the most annoying things I find about NXT ring announcing is they go straight to the name without traditionally announcing where the wrestlers are from and how much they weigh. Makes the intro seem like we're just getting it over with. This is this is all about. And then Tyler Bates suddenly turns and towel whips Wesley, who doubles over in pain from the prank. Joe Gacy be like, imagine if I use The Undertaker's dark lights and combine it with Naomi's features. And as a result, I can barely see shit. Not a good look if you can't see anything. This is gonna be quick, first cover of the matchup. Tyler Bates should consider himself lucky that Joe Gacy kicked out of that roll-up because if he didn't, the match would have been over before Tyler had the chance to do the sunset flip on Wes Lee. And why didn't he just quickly stomp on him to break up the pin? Looking flashy doesn't always guarantee good strategy. Crucifix pin, his shoulders are down. What? Wesley sees that Joe Gacy has Tyler Bay locked in a crucifix pin and chooses to risk not breaking it up on the one-off chance that Tyler kicks out in time? Hey, and for so whoa. Wesley complains that Tyler did not also attack Joe in that exchange. If you look at it, since Wes missed him, it's pretty obvious that Tyler was gonna miss him too. Also, it's every man for himself, so why is Wes getting so cranky because Tyler chose not to team up with him in this match? Did he forget what type of match this is? By Darren, Tyler, and Wes to fight each other, Joe just sealed his own doom because that strategy has worked for the heel almost 0% of the time. Championship. We're only two minutes into this match and I'm already rolling my eyes. Why the confusion and the shoving instead of the punching and the body slamming? Y'all already aren't even on the same page, so why keep doing this? Getting his career as up and over. Okay, rough start, but that's all gone now. Hopefully. Sunset flip mixed with a German suplex. You don't see a lot of that even in NXT, so major props to these three athletes. Suplex. Oh, yes. Hitting that suplex throw activated Tyler Bates' instincts to turn himself into a tree. Wrestlers really like cosplaying as trees, don't they? Cover. Into the count. Oh, Smart move on the part of Tyler Bates, knowing that he wouldn't successfully pin Wes Lee in time, so he removed himself from Joe Gacy's oncoming elbow drop, letting Wes take all the damage. Hard to believe these guys went from horrible strategy at the start of the match to epic strategies in under two minutes. NXT Universe! Tyler's strength is impressive, but I can't help but say when you think about it, and I never stop thinking during matches, due to how slow Tyler is able to move, the only one being damaged here is himself while the others are just having a joy ride. Do some Man, Joe Gacy is fucking scary. That Bray Wyatt-like smile he gives Tyler Bate after practically absorbing that kick sent shivers down my spine. Body's aching all the time. Wait, what? And I'm sweating already, man. Well, that's what happens when you wear a full suit and tie in a packed arena with spotlights shining on you. And Wesley turned it! Now that was executed perfectly. Wesley made sure to extend his legs so that both Joe and Tyler would get hit. Don't get to be the longest reigning North American champion by being stupid. How much the North American ch Sure, seeing tables would be exciting, but I personally believe adding tables would ruin this match because it's perfect as it is, without any weapons needed. Bringing in tables would downgrade it because they're not needed. Tyler Driver, 97! Not trying to slow anything down here, but Joe Gacy just got hit by Tyler Bates' finish and move less than five seconds ago. How the hell was he back up like it never happened? Right at this moment, everyone scheduled to perform for the rest of the night has just considered packing up their bags and calling it a night. And I wouldn't blame them if they did. Here are five sins off for an amazing North American title match. All three men exceeded all expectations. Nearly 10 minutes of commercials. Did we really need to go through that many commercials at the start of the event? With all due respect to the NXT Heritage Cup trophy, this doesn't really have the same impact on American soil as it would in the United Kingdom due to the match being labeled as a British Rounds Rules match. When NXT UK passed away, I really think this trophy should have followed. Can Dragon Lee please stop freezing the broadcast during this entrance? I'm always checking my TV to make sure it isn't fucking up on me. I know it's a little hard to see, but you can actually see that the NXT Heritage Cup trophy clearly hasn't been polished in quite some time. 
I guess when it was in its eight month absence, no I'm Dar just picked it up without even bothering to have it polished. Who'd want to fight for a dirty trophy? Would... Pretending your trophy is a baby. Little advantage for dragging no. the Heel wrestler always tries to rip off a luchador's mask cliche. After all the decades, this went from being a disrespectful thing to the most annoying thing that could happen in matches involving luchadors. The, the, fave, the Booker T Fave 5. The entire existence of the Booker T Fave 5. Ten years ago, it was a funny gag, but now it's like making references to Dabbin and Baby Shark in the year 2023. Hit him! Oromensa be like, sorry I'm late, got stuck in traffic and could not find the certain Alicia you were looking for in a while. I did find a fox though, it was cute. Dar now, into the cover and- Dragon Lee's shoulder was actually off the canvas before the referee even gave him a one count, but continued to count anyway instead of restarting it when the shoulder actually was down. This referee just screwed Dragon out of a point. Extra second he can have to recruit- Whoa! Alright, Dragon Lee took a risk and it paid off. I've seen it before, but I still hold my breath every time knowing what is more likely to go wrong. Well done. Three. Noam Dar should have been disqualified for attacking Dragon Lee after the bell had already rung to end the round. But of course, this referee does nothing because he's likely under Noam's payroll. He won't be the only one, as you'll soon see. <laughs> this brawl on the outside between Oro Mensa and Nathan Frazier is sadly far more entertaining than what's actually going on in the ring right now. The official has tossed out. Oro and Nathan are the cornermen for both competitors in this match, yet are ejected from the arena for fighting with one another. I'm just saying, isn't it a requirement for cornermen to be present in this match? Or were they just there for show and they don't actually mean shit? Shakara no. Jackson and Lash Legend aligning themselves with Noam Dar is supposed to be the big twist of this match. And none of us are on board with it. If anything, it ruined what was already a very questionable match. The last match removed five sins, this one just added in the back. You're obsessed with the idea of breaking me. The idea of having Dijak being obsessed with mentally breaking Ilya Dragunov in addition to physically breaking him was a great addition to this upcoming Last Man Standing match. Build Up had its horror tropes added in. Dijak may be a monstrous psychopath, but at least he has his priorities straight when it comes to what his children see. It also made him sound even more psychotic, and I love it. Oh. Skill, test of will. No one likes a rhymer, Vic. Put the women to bed. Dijak only said to put his kids to bed. He said nothing about putting women to bed. And at this point in life, saying put the women to bed because they shouldn't be seen, this is social media suicide. Dijak saw that Ilya Dragunov was about to connect the 619 on an invisible John Cena and made sure to protect his hero from getting hit. Maybe this last man standing match would be a whole lot better if Vic Joseph wasn't making cringe references. How about instead of an airport reference, you sell how brutal that had to be for Ilya Dragunov to be thrown right onto the steel stairs like that? It's almost like, oh! Damn, Ilya Dragunov has balls to throw himself through a table just to knock over Dijak. I still believe Ilya took the worst of that damage due to the splinters, but I still gotta remove a sin because we almost never see that. Earlier, the likes of maybe we've never seen- oh! Holy fucking shit! I actually clutched the back of my own head because I've been in that scenario before. I wasn't trying to suplex anyone on the stairs, but I have fallen back and whacked my head with a smack like that. Sliced my head right open. Oh! Right there! Oh! Now we got a double center mover, one for Dijak hitting the stairs perfectly in that DDT, and the other because Ilya still took the worst of that due to his back hitting the short end of the stairs. What a brutal match so far, and we just got started. I think. Oh, well. <laughs> Ilya Dragunov went from chopping Dijak to simply slapping him like he's a child who's been misbehaving. Parental instincts are running wild so far. Well, oh yes! With all due respect to Booker T, a legend in this business, please shut up. It's not making this any more intense, it's comic relief, and we don't need comic relief right now. <laughs> this whole sequence of Ilya being hit by a kendo stick over and over while screaming in pain is one of the most horrifying things to take place all night long. These two put on one of the best last man standing matches in recent memory, and they got their act right on point. Here are another five sins off the counter. You suck! You suck! You suck! Moving on. Man, I could watch these Chase University segments all day long and be entertained every time. Duke Hudson is hilarious in this role. Students have to fail like Thea does. The bloody hell are you doing? A real question, why the hell did you wait until now to tell off Drew Gulak for talking down and humiliating Thea? You were literally right there the entire time. What is all of this? I got a better idea. Instead of trying to interview Noam Dar after what went down, how about we skip? Vic Joseph is telling Booker T to purchase tickets to NXT Great American Bash as if Booker isn't going to be there for commentary purposes. Or does Vic know something we don't? Ouch! I just broke my ankle! Sorry Brutus, you're on your own tonight for this tag team championship match. These Dallas boys. Wolfgang is a dick to cameramen. Guess he got tired of standing in front of them for so long and had to hesitate the temptation to punch them out. Of Joe Gacy, who's on the outside of the ring.
Uh, Vic, the hairstyle may look similar to Joe Gacy, but I think you got the wrong Joe here. Think about Starbucks, then realize the Joe you were looking for. One month they had cleaned out the tag team division. Well, if it only took them a month to clean out the tag team division, as Booker T worded it, that really shows how small the NXT tag team division truly is. Hello, Bruda, man. The way Booker T pronounces Brutus, why does he always gotta go with the cringe nicknames here? Hello, Bruda. It wasn't pretty. This has been one of the better NXT pay-per-view events following the latest expansion of the product. However, you can tell this match just isn't it due to the audience being almost completely silent throughout the majority of it. The gold right now and a nice takedown. Oh, that it took Julius Creed almost 10 stomps on the steel stairs before the crowd showed any interest in clapping along with him. Damn. Uh, Alright, while the majority of the match was disappointing, Julius Creed going on a suplex throw rampage along with kip-ups after every suplex was entertaining and very funny. I love comedy. They're just, just going crazy. Because Brutus Creed took too long to leap off the top rope, Wolfgang was awkwardly standing around just waiting for something to happen. And that's something you don't want to be doing during wrestling matches. There we go, Vic. The referee allows this to go on for quite some time. It's as if the rules suddenly don't exist anymore. No surprises! Joe Coffey was already starting to throw himself over the top rope before Julius Creed could ever clothesline him out. They're not doing good with timing tonight, are they? The Creed brothers end up losing because Julius is awestruck at the sight of The Rock's daughter in action. Don't get me wrong, it's cool to see her, but come on, man. Ready for a new battleground. Wah, wah. Sure, Lyra Valkyria made sure not to touch the NXT Women's Championship belt. However, I'd still say she gave herself bad luck by touching the blanket the title was sitting on. Just look, but don't touch anything, Lyra. Tiffany Stratton learns from Lyra's mistake and makes sure to not touch the title belt or the blanket attached to it, thus resulting in her victory tonight. That was easy. I do want to know something. NXT no longer has the rainbow colors as part of their logos, so why do we still have the rainbow colors on the championships? Couldn't we just go back to the original design, or is that idea too logical? Indy Hartwell had to relinquish after she was drafted. What I don't understand is why Indy Hartwell had to relinquish the NXT Women's Championship upon being drafted to Raw, but Alba Fire and Isla Dunn were allowed to hang on to the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship upon being drafted to SmackDown. One of these two women will be wearing gold. Well, I mean, unless this match ends in a draw, that is. Just saying, that's always a possibility here. Great doubt in gold right there. Something as simple as that looked so amazing. Lyra Valkyria figured that Tiffany Stratton was going to kip up and went straight to catch her into the side headlock. We don't often see that amazing counter, so it's refreshing. This is the battleground she was born to fight in. Can we not make so many puns or references to battleground on the commentary all the time, please? I don't want to roll my eyes too much here. Up the pace here without oh, 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 oh. Ouch, ouch. I landed awkwardly on my knee and I could very well be injured. That means it's somersaulting time. Whee! Oh, oh no, no, no. Oh. It's hard to tell whether Tiffany intended to miss the ring post or not, but the impact of the landing didn't really look that good, so I'll still give it a sin. Security gets counted out. Strand's gonna become the new champion. Wait, so it's confirmed that a vacant championship can be won by disqualification and countouts in this match? When did that become a rule? Wow, this submission and bridge by Tiffany Stratton was so awesome that I gotta remove two sins from the counter. I've always wanted to see that because it causes more pain to the opponent and it's a great visual to the spectator. Cover, 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 cover. Cover, 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 cover. To go competed at stand and deliver. leg. Yeah, there was no chance that Lyra Valkyria was going to successfully connect a third consecutive Northern Light suplex because she was closer to the ropes in that exchange. Oh, Lyra had a brief brain fart when she tried to pin Tiffany outside the ring following that cross body before realizing where they were. This is straight to Stratton. Indeed, impressive strength by Tiffany Stratton, while Lyra Valkyria is clearly using her leg to push herself up. We don't have NXT Battleground to bring you the main event of WrestleMania 35. Let's just be thankful the referee didn't continue counting after Tiffany got her shoulders up. Everything she's got. Oh. It's a good thing that Lyra sold the knee injury in this exchange. However, Tiffany must have thought that she was supposed to be hit by the spinning kick and fell over from absolutely nothing. This has been a great NXT Women's Title match and a well-deserved victory for Tiffany Stratton for sure. Both women deserve the praise for this performance. The idea of turning Braun Breaker heel following his NXT Championship loss was a great one. I figured he'd go straight to the main roster after the loss, but I like what they did here. Man, if Braun Breaker looked like a badass before, he looks even better now with that ripped jacket and a dog mask. Here's to hoping the match is better than their decent performance at Stand and Deliver. Wow, just when I thought it wouldn't be possible for Carmelo Hayes to top his prior entrances in the past, here's this championship introduction by Trick Williams and the success of sports teams in Massachusetts. But the ring I won't lie, that looked more like Braun Breaker countered Carmelo Hayes into a powerbomb on the floor. So I was a little confused when Carmelo suddenly bounced back up and started hammering away on Braun afterwards. I don't know whether to blame that on the move or the camera angle. 
is on another level. That's that mistake I'm talking about. <laughs> that simple nope from Braun Breaker as he counters Carmelo Hayes was funny. Braun's doing what a lot of wrestlers watching the entire time should be doing. Nothing pretty about it, but effective. What? Braun Breaker literally went from limping and barely able to put any sort of pressure on the injured leg to easily walking on it like it magically healed to 100% within seconds. That is not how injuries work at all here. After over a year of being the guy who never monologued during crucial moments of his matches, Braun Breaker sadly monologues during crucial moments of his matches. And why would he take Carmelo Hayes too lightly after the latter already beat him? Even though Braun's leg slipped off of Carmelo before he could fully connect a Frankensteiner, the fact that he's able to quickly climb the ropes and launch the move is still amazing as it is. One of the things I'm glad Braun retained even with a change of demeanor. Realizing it, sensing it. Oh! I'm pretty sure I've done this at least once before, but it's extremely rare for me to use this sin and actually remove one from the counter instead of adding it. But the way Carmelo Hayes was a dick to Braun's breakers was the perfect example because that was so awesome. This match is amazing and already tops their first encounter. Hayes, back up. Oh! Well, holy shit, am I right? I'm constantly removing sins in this last match. Honestly, what the hell was this level of excitement when these two faced off at Stand and Deliver? Was it just because it was the morning over there in the West Coast?